Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are working on the fourth installment of the medicine cabinet. Let's dive in. Next, we need to create the frame that will go around the mirror. Now the mirror on this is backlit and is rather thick. It's about an inch thick. And I want it, the frame to kind of wrap around it, not to come all the way out flush with the front of the mirror, but to be set back a little bit. So I need to create a rabbit for the mirror to fit into the frame. Now, normally you would make this out of two pieces. You would have one piece to back it, another piece to go onto it. And I thought, you know, that's a big really good way, but I, I want to create a rabbit on this. And so that means I need to take this board, which is one inch thick by three and a half inches, and I need to cut a rather large rabbit that's about a half inch by two inches. That's a big rabbit. And so I'm going to be grabbing a rabbiting saw. Uh, this is also known as a kerfing plane. Uh, it is the same thickness as the saw I would use and cuts a kerf to hold the saw in place. And this is one of those times where the, the kerfing saw is actually very, very useful. It allows me to get down into it. And most of this I could have done just straight away uh, with the, the rabbiting saw, but uh, I, I'm going to create the kerf and then come into this. And this is one of those steps that seems like it, it should take a long time because you're resawing lengthwise. And you're right, it does take a long time, but it's actually kind of fun. I, I found this step to be somewhat enjoyable and, and I had to do it four times. Um, but with enough time, it goes through. <laughs> For the other side, uh, that was nice because we could just cut to, down to the depth with the rabbit saw, so I didn't have to come in with the saw afterwards. Um, but with this hand saw, it actually was deep enough I could go down in the two inches and cut all the way through until the piece fell off. And that is an incredibly satisfying moment when that piece comes off. Then I can use the rabbiting block plane to just clean up the corners and get ourselves a really nice, clean, rabbited joint. We need to cut 45s on this for the miters. And so I'm going to use my bench hook to hold them roughly at 45. And then I can come in and shoot them on here with the shooting board plane. And I want to make sure that they are dead on 45. Now, the actual length of these matters because the mirror is going to be housing. But I left myself a little bit of slop. So as long as the two sides are the same length and the two ends are the same length, then it, it should be okay. So we're going to mark them out cut them and then shoot them. Um, and after doing it on the bench hook the first time, I realized yeah, freehand is easier. Um, I don't know why, I just don't like using bench hooks quite as much. I'd rather put it in the vise and, and cut it that way. Then we can shoot the end, get ourselves a nice clean 45, and then do it again, and again, and again. Yeah, that's one piece. We need to create three more. <laughs> We're also going to be putting chamfers on all the corners. I'm going to be using the uh, chamfer sled from Replanes that locks onto the, the block plane. And I'm, I'm using this because I'm going to be doing quite a bit of chamfers, and they are relatively large chamfers. Unfortunately, I can't use it on this inside corner because it runs into the rabbit. And so for that, I just use the block plane plane without the chamfer sled and you know six of one up does another for actually gluing this together i'm going to be using epoxy um, it is far stronger than the pva particular in this end grain glue up uh, and i'm going to need it here because it is going to have a lot of stress i am going to be putting in splines on these corners um, but i do want to actually uh, make sure they are relatively strong even without that. And the epoxy really gives you that. Using this frame band clamp makes this so easy because you can clamp it, put a good bit of pressure down in, and then work these until they're right on and then really crank it down with the screw. Make sure that everything is truly square and then come back in and start working on the, the splines once the epoxy is cured. I'm going to be cutting in uh, splines on each of the corner. And I, normally I make these with something that is the thickness of the saw. So I can just cut in and then squeeze that in. And I can put several of them side by side. In this case, I wanted to make something a little bit stronger. Um, so I'm cutting in uh, just over an eighth inch wide. So that's uh, two grooves running down side by side. Uh, and then come in and remove the waste. Then I can use an eighth inch chisel to remove the waste back in there. And then we can check. I want to make sure I have a really, really tight spline. And so I can fit it in there and wiggle it back and forth. I made the groove just a little bit shorter than it should be so that I can come in and file it out. And it's amazing how tight of a fit you can get when you have floats and files to really detail it down. 
using this uh, curly maple, which just happened to be the right thickness I was looking for. No one's ever going to see the curl, so it really doesn't matter. Um, but it was the right thickness and worked pretty well for the space. And this, of course, we're going to epoxy in as well. Uh, the epoxy just means I don't have to clamp it. There doesn't have to be a clamping force on it. The epoxy is great. Any gap filling, so any, any uh, um, gaps in there, it fills them nicely. It gives you good strength even through that and gives you a nice clean look as well. Apply the epoxy, slide it down in, and then let it sit. And then, of course, do it again. Once the epoxy is cured, we can come back and roughly cut them off and then hit them with a plane to do the, the final smoothing. I'm trying to plane onto the board, which I can do on most corners, uh, though some of them might be going against the grain. I need to be very careful with that. But if you set the plane up right, you can even go against the grain. We want to smooth all these out and get a nice, clean transition from corner to corner. We can also take off any of the epoxy on the back. I'll take off the large chunks with a chisel, and then I'm going to come in with a card scraper and really clean them out. Uh, the plane allows me to come through and hit all of the corners and get a nice clean transition from one side to the other. You see how I'm kind of rounding around the corner. As long as at the corner the plane is at 45 degrees, it will work well for both directions of the, the grain. Some of these corners didn't match up dead on because my, uh, uh, my rabbiting work wasn't perfect, so I can come in and clean those out. A little bit of a card scraper and some final detail, and now we're ready to start putting in the hardware. How are we going to hang this on? I'm going to use uh, some hinges. I was really wanting to get some nice ones from Brusso, some thick ones, but I didn't have the money on, on this particular project, so I'm using some slightly cheaper ones that I can get on Amazon. But I do want to rabbit them into the frame. They're going to sit on face of the, the frame. I want them to rabbit into the frame of the carcass, not the frame of the mirror. I guess I have to specify that. I tried coming in with the router plane to clean out the bottom, but I found that the reference surface on the other side wasn't quite enough, so most of it just ended up freehand chiseling and took it down close to it, put the hinge in place, tested it, make sure it was the right depth. If it needed a little more, and took off a little bit more. Uh, it's amazing what you can do just freehand chiseling. Then we want to mark out all the holes. So I'm going to use a center point, mark them all out, and grab my Yankee drill. And, 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 and Yeah, I'm going to grab my demon-possessed Yankee drill. <laughs> I got a bunch of holes to drill, so I just put the bit in this and chucked it up so that the depth I needed to go was the depth to the chuck and used that as a stop. We're going to put in all the screws, and if you put a little bit of wax on the tip, uh, they go in a, a lot easier. And we can drive all of these down, and once these are all in place, now we can transfer the marks onto the frame for the mirror. I'm going to set it on its face, mark two ends, and then I can lift it up on I'll open the door and have my assistant hold it in place. I'll make sure that this first one is marked right on that mark, and I'm just going to punch one hole. I'm going to use the center punch to mark it, drill it, and put in one screw. This gives me a fulcrum in which I can turn this whole thing and get them all lined up. Once I have one in place, I can move around to the other side and put another one in place. Once I have these two in place, now I can mark, punch all the holes, drill all the holes, put in all the screws, and our frame is now attached to our frame. Um, yeah, um, lots of holes, lots of screws, and uh, yeah, this isn't even all of them, so lots of fun. So there you have it. The project is getting there. We have both of the doors. This one is for the electrical connections, and then this one is the main door. Uh, we have a mirror that will be going onto this. We still have to mount in the, uh, the stops that will actually keep this closed, magnetic stops. Next time we'll be doing all of the servicing and the smoothing and the final finishing and the actual finishing of it, some of the detailed chamfers, and I might be putting in a little bit of carving, so stay tuned. Hopefully one more video and this will be done. We'll actually have it hanging up in the bathroom, so I'm really getting excited about this one. This is the point in the project where you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Things are really starting to come together. It's getting exciting, and this is where you can make mistakes, so this is the point you want to Slow down, rethink through everything, make sure everything is exactly the way it should be, and you don't have to go back and adjust things later because uh, it's even much easier to adjust them now rather than when it's hanging on the wall. So make sure everything's working the way you want it and actually functioning. So if you haven't seen the whole series on this, I'll leave a link to the playlist down below and you can go down through that. If you have other questions, thoughts, ideas, let me know those in the comments. I do read through all of them and I answer as many of those as I can. So thank you for that. It does actually help out the channel, just like hitting like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, you know how it works. This is YouTube. The algorithm is the all-powerful thing and gets us in front of more people. And anytime you do put that down there or you just join the group of comment down below, people who just put comment down below, down below, thank you. That really means a lot. Uh, but if you want to be really special, amazing, wonderful, beautiful, benevolent even, think about becoming a patron on Patreon. All of these people over here, those are patrons on Patreon. And without patrons or members on the channel, people who have clicked the join button, you guys are the ones that keep us going and helps us get in front of more people and just supports us. Thank you. 
Without patrons, we would not exist. We are completely sponsored by you guys. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is honestly my favorite part in the project where I can no longer say that I am unhinged. <laughs>